That was from a game that I made almost half a decade ago. I've come a long way since then. Developing video games for five years, I have still never really answered the fundamental question that so many of my subscribers have asked me to answer. How do you actually start making games? And on top of this basic question, how do you make video games the right way? I've made a lot of mistakes on my road to becoming a full-time artist and game developer, starting my own game studio, and pursuing what I love to do. So after watching this video, you will have my most informative advice on what I would have told myself when I initially started five years ago. The first thing that I would like to discuss is on finding your why. Why do you wanna learn game development in the first place? Is it because you're just passionate about coding and want to have fun creating games for your friends? Maybe it's to eventually one day make a game you have always envisioned playing that just doesn't exist in the current market. Or maybe you're looking to go full-time as a developer and turn this whole game development process into your career. Whatever your reasoning for starting up development, try to find that purpose and stick with manageable goals to see your vision through. Goals are something that will adapt and change as you progress, so keep these achievable as you go along. In my case, I wanted to spend the first two to three years just making games to have fun, learn, and grow as a developer. I never set myself up for trying to make money or become successful when just starting this newfound passion. It wasn't until the fourth year that I started to see where this could lead for me. My skills were rapidly growing at this point in time, so I started a YouTube channel and told myself I had five years to go full time and turn game development from a fun, stress-free hobby into a career that I could eventually support a family and mortgage out of. Everyone will learn at different speeds, having unique strengths, and be inspired from different different sources. The main thing is to stay inspired from where you would like to end up and what you would like to accomplish. The next thing is to find an art style that works for you. It might sound silly, but art is incredibly valuable in developing video games. Creating an art style that speaks to people is one of the fastest ways for grabbing attention. Yeah, don't get me wrong, making an amazing game requires a fantastic idea and a polished execution. However, it is safe to say that the art style of a game is your consumer's first impression of your project and can also be one of the most time-consuming aspects of your development process. Finding an art style that you like to practice and also enjoy aesthetically will create that perfect balance between wanting to learn and feel accomplished in your work. I personally have always loved pixel art games, growing up with handheld consoles, so when I was looking to start developing video games of my own, picking up pixel art was a no-brainer. Maybe you love the 3D tune shading style of games like Zelda Wind Waker, or the look of clean, colorful vector art from your favorite album covers. The idea is to find an art style that is appealing to your eye first. Personally, I find the art style of Atrio, a game made by my friends over at Isto Inc., to be very eye-catching, as it isn't the most detailed art style in the world, and yet because of how it is animated and rigged up in engine, it gives a twist to the classic vector art style I've seen time and time again. Oh, hey guys, sorry to interrupt. What Reese said is so true! Atrio does have the best visuals out of any game ever to exist. So remember, pro tip, Oh, we shoot for second place because first place is taken. Okay, hold on, hold on. Steven, that is not what I was saying at all, man. So true. Uh, anyway. The point is we want our journey to be as enjoyable as possible. So practicing a style that is both attainable for new artists, but also something you are proud of, is what makes the perfect art style for you to begin learning. So once you've experimented with the type of art you might want to use for your projects, it is time to discuss how you can actually develop these ideas into real concepts and video games. That's right, I'm talking about game engines. To develop video games, you will need to either write your own development engine if you want to make your life a living hell for two plus years before starting your project, or you can choose from the ever-expanding library of game engines available to us indie developers. I'd like to discuss a few game engines I've personally used or have friends that highly recommend picking up for beginners. If you guys know me, you know that I use Game Maker Studios 2 for the majority of my personal and commercial indie games currently. 
I still love GameMaker, but I don't plan on using it throughout the entirety of my career. I would always advise trying different software and tools to make sure you are using what is appropriate for your personal workflow. To keep this section compact and easy to follow, I will list a few reasons to use each engine that I would personally recommend using. Unity, being one of the biggest game engines on the market, is definitely worth your time picking up and learning. It does have a ton of external support, tutorials, third-party tools for things like networking, and basically anything you could ever imagine a game engine could have. However, I personally just don't really enjoy how Unity actually goes about creating games, which is why I haven't really picked up the engine after my 30-day Unity learning challenge. GameMaker Studios 2 is a great engine for small 2D pixel art games. It can make games quickly, you have a solid room editor. However, things can get extremely messy very quickly when trying to make, you know, open world monster taming RPG games with a dozen of features and mechanics. And also, I really hate making any kind of UI or dialogue elements in this program, so make sure to try and keep those to a minimum in your games if you're using this engine. It's possible and doable, and I'm currently doing it, but it's hell, so just don't do it. Godot, while never actually using it myself, I have quite a few friends that do highly recommend using this engine if you are making smaller projects in either pixel art or low poly 3D. Godot to me seems like a cross between Unity and GameMaker, pulling a lot of great elements from both engines to make its own unique workflow. This is an engine I personally have been very eager to try out, however it is still in the startup phase of what the engine can become. There are not a ton of resources out there like you could find for game engines like Unity, however I think this engine has a promising future ahead, so hopefully it can get the funding and fanbase it truly deserves moving forward. Unreal Engine, while extremely powerful for higher detailed video games, has quite a decent learning curve and might turn newcomers away from game development with all of the wild features offered in this program. Maybe come back to this one after playing around with something like Unity for a little while. That's just my personal opinion. Maybe you think differently from me and Unreal Engine is actually extremely easy for you to comprehend. So if that's you, by all means, go ahead and try it out. I just, I don't know. My brain just doesn't wrap around the concept of using Unreal Engine. Lastly is Construct 3. This is an engine I recently picked up while giving myself one hour to try and learn the engine from no prior experience. Construct surprised me with how much fun a more drag and drop coding system approach can be. Definitely a great choice for beginners looking to make 2D games. However, I personally find that this engine won't teach you much about coding if you're looking to expand further in the industry, and making large games would probably become a nightmare of endless scrolling and a slow development with the drag and drop system. Try out a few different engines that lend their strengths to what you want to start creating, and find what engine you could see yourself using for the years to come. I'm sure you will swap around as time goes on, but trying to find that one main engine you can make the majority of your work in will help you become much more efficient at making games, and will help you define a consistency in your development. People actually really like game studios that have a very consistent style, so keep this in mind as well. Michael, what's going on, man? So I have this really cool idea for a new game, and it's basically like an RPG, open world, dungeon crawler, monster catcher, resource collection kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man, that's... Yeah, it's a great idea. That sounds, that sounds great. Oh, really? Because I've been thinking about this idea for a really long time, and... Ugh, Reese. I can't, I can't, man, I just can't. I can't let you make that game. Sorry, it's... It's just bad. It's bad. Oh. The next subject is on reaching out to other developers. In order to flourish in almost any field of work, you must be able to pull from like-minded talent and seek out those doing what you do, but at a higher level of expertise. Making friends in a hobby or line of work you enjoy will help keep things fun by being able to relate to your peers' experiences and have them encourage you when the motivation just isn't enough to continue on its own. Peers help keep you accountable for what you are working on without the pressure of a boss looming over your head for an upcoming deadline. 
For me, I started by just joining game development Discord servers, following talented artists on Twitter to pull inspiration from, and eventually starting up my own YouTube channel to one day meet some of my biggest inspirations in the community. Everyone's path is a little bit different, but personally, I found that when I started reaching out and meeting other people that shared the same passion for the hobby I valued so highly, it made me feel a sense of accomplishment knowing that I was growing alongside these people. To this day, my peers motivate me more than anything. Seeing others grow makes me want to excel and share in this idea of a continuous development of oneself. Game jams are also another great opportunity to meet other developers. Join groups to get involved with what others are doing and find people of a similar level of talent to help each other learn and challenge one another in a healthy yet impactful way. I couldn't be more thankful for the friendships I've made along my story. So get out there and create your own experiences to increase your learning potential and make new opportunities for your future. To end off this introduction to game development, let's hear it from some of my friends who have also decided to take on the feat of going full time as indie developers and releasing commercial games successfully. Take it away, Michael. Hey, thanks, Reese. Hey guys, my name's Michael Kosha of Kindred Games. I'm the lead developer of the game Swords and Magic and stuff and I've been making games for about 15 years now. My number one game dev tip is to build off of what you know. And what I mean by that is, when you start in game dev, shelve all your other ideas. I know they're awesome, but they're a lot of work and you don't really know how to start with those yet. So instead, dive into your game engine and just start experimenting. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you instant gratification when you learn something new in your game engine and how to do something and you find a new function and you build off of that idea until you've discovered it and you've learned it. And you're also going to solidify all of that knowledge as you're working on those little intricate parts of whatever this game is that you're building. Anyway, start small, experiment and have fun and try not to get too overwhelmed with a giant project. If you want to check out more of my content, you can check me out on twitch.tv slash kindred games. <sighs> What's up, everybody? My name is Stephen from Misto Inc. My tip is to focus on yourself. Game dev is often a grueling process. It can take a long time and can take a lot out of you. If you don't know what makes you happy, taking the breaks, figuring out what really keeps you going, you're probably gonna burn out. So my focus is figuring out when you need to just lay on the couch and take a break or work out or spend time with friends and family, that balance will keep you going for a super long project. Game development is a tough hobby to get into, but it is definitely an extremely rewarding experience when you finally start to feel confident in what you are doing and get to express yourself through your game projects and the creativity behind them. As I mentioned earlier, joining communities is a great way to get involved and have fun with your passions, so if you haven't already, make sure to join the Boundless Games Discord server to get advice from other developers, share your games, videos, and artwork, and even participate in upcoming jams. We hosted our first game jam a couple months back with more to come in the future, but while you wait for the game contests, you can partake in our smaller community-hosted art jams where the community can vote on their favorite entries based on the theme prompts and win some sweet new roles on the server. The first event will start September 1st, 2021, so get in the server and grab your jam roll to get notified on the first ever Boundless Art Jam. Thank you so much for watching to the very end on these videos. It helps the channel a ton. Good luck developing awesome games. Subscribe if you're new around here, and I will be back with more content very soon.